Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we're going to do a playthrough of Wisdom of Solomon. This game is normally a competitive game, but we're going to play the solo variant that comes in the rule book that I have here. When you play Wisdom of Solomon solo, you will be playing man versus machine made cloth bag. <laughs> so this machine made cloth bag will be referred to as Jeroboam. Jeroboam and I are going to battle for favor, and at the end of the game, if we have more favor than Jeroboam, we win the game. So I'm going to show you guys how to set up this game for solo, specifically, and then we'll jump into playing. Let's do it. The first thing you'll want to do is grab your player pieces. Here we have the six custom houses. We have our workers, our six workers, and then our favor token tracker. So I'm going to be purple, and Jeroboam will be red. You'll place everyone's favor token at 10 favor because you're going to use favor kind of like a currency. You're going to use it to purchase different things and you'll actually decrease your favor. And then you may sell things to gain favor. So yeah, it's, it's almost like a currency. So you'll start at 10. Here we have all the different types of resource tokens. We have green food tokens, brown wood tokens, gray stone tokens, orange copper tokens, yellow gold tokens, and then our blue exotic tokens, and they're considered wild. I have them in this order because you can see you have the most of the food tokens and the least of the gold. I mean, you have three exotic, but essentially what's important to know is for the AI, for Jeroboam, he'll always look at, okay, something is uh, less scarce or more scarce. So these ones are valued higher than these ones for him because there's more food tokens than there are uh, gold tokens and so forth. What you'll do is you'll have more of these at the beginning of the game, but you'll remove them based on the amount of players that you're playing. So if I'm playing with five players, I'll just use whatever's on the board. But if I'm playing with, with less than that, whatever the amount less is from five, we remove that from each pile. So for an example, I'm playing with two players. I removed three cubes from each one of these. Our next setup step is the shortage tiles. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shuffle these up and place six of them randomly on the board. You can see four here on the board right now. I have one here for Sinai. So normally you would, if you went to Sinai, you'd get to be able to obtain one of the exotic goods. Now you can't. There's a shortage there. So you place this tile over it. And you can see it's kind of cool. It actually matches with the art. So it looks really nice. Same thing with Negeb. Same thing with um, Phil uh, Philanstia and Moab. We also have Jezreel and Hamath. So all of those locations, normally when you'd go there, you'd get to obtain a good. But you won't because there are shortages in those locations. Now the remaining of these shortage tiles for the solo game, I'm going to place into this cloth bag and they will be used for Jeroboam. There are also 17 solo tiles that we're going to go ahead and grab and place into the cloth bag as well. And for Jeroboam's turns, we're going to be revealing one tile at random from this bag. Now let's go ahead and set up the marketplace. So the marketplace has locations for each different type of good, except for exotic goods. And I'll explain how those come up as we do the playthrough. In a two-player game, you need to fill the bottom two spots with the specific goods. So I've got two uh, stone here as well, two of the wood, uh, the wood resources, and so on and so forth. Over here on the right, this tells us how much it costs in order for us to purchase these. And we, cost, we, we pay for those with favor. So right now we have 10 favor. If I purchase this, I'd go down to 9 favor. I can also sell and place goods here. And if I place them, let's say if I placed one here, I would obtain 4 favor. So kind of a cool way of doing this. But we start out with each uh, two on each one of these at the bottom side of those tracks. Now let's go ahead and set up our temple. So we have these temple tiles. Now I have a bunch more. I've pulled out exactly the ones that I need. I've randomly chosen them. I'm going to place them out here. And that's one of the game ending conditions. Every time you build a temple, you'll choose one of these tiles face down. You get to look at it, but your opponent doesn't get to see it. And then once there are no more temple tiles left here, the game will end in that round. In a three to five player game, you'll place tiles here. And in a four to five player game, you'll also place two tiles here. So right now we only have nine because we're only playing a two player game. 
Now we can set up our building cards. These are pretty cool. So we can purchase or build buildings during the game. So we'll grab our building deck that's been shuffled up and we'll reveal four of them. One for each of these rows, okay? And we'll set them up like so. So we've got a copper mine, a harbor, a bazaar, and our last one is a lumber camp. And then we get to take the top one on the deck and flip it face up. We have a granary. Now, these will not refresh until the end of each round, which is considered a year. So at the end of each year, we'll get new buildings. But the buildings, the cost to build them are over here. So this would cost one stone and two food. And then we gain fa uh, favor equal to two plus whatever's over here. So we gain three favor. But if we built this copper mine, we gain 10 favor. Some buildings will give us an, an action spot that we can place our worker and do something. Some of them will just give us an inherent ability. So we'll go through those as we play. The final part of setup, we get to draw fortune cards. Now as an actual player, we'll get to draw two. Jeroboam will just grab one and it doesn't matter what it is. He'll use it just to get favor at the end of the game or he might trade it in for five favor points. So we'll just keep this by his player pieces. For us, we get to look at these two and pick one and discard the other. We have Grace and Glory and Liberal Soul. So Grace and Glory, immediately claim a Holy Place bonus with only two workers. You may not claim another Holy Place bonus this year. Ooh, I haven't showed you guys what that is, but I'll tell you about it if I decide to pick that card. <laughs> uh, Liberal Soul, spend any three resources to gain 10 favor. Wow. Yeah, I kind of like this one. I'm going to do the Liberal Soul. When playing against Jeroboam, he gets to be first player. So he will be a first player. He'll grab this first player token. At the beginning of the game, we get to do an initial market purchase. This means we can use our favor to purchase up to three resources if we'd like. Since the first player gets to do the first action on the board, the last player actually gets to choose resources first. So we get to choose before Jeroboam does. So I think we're going to go ahead and grab two pieces of wood for two favor and then one piece of gold for two favor. So we're going to decrease our favor by four, but we now have two wood and one gold. Four favor means we go one, two, three, four. So we're down to six and Jeroboam is at 10. Jeroboam is now going to go ahead and purchase some resources. What he does is he looks for the cheapest resources that he does not have. So he doesn't have any. So he's got the cost of clay is one, the cost of food is one, and the cost of stone is one. Well, we know that clay is the highest valued resource, and it's the same cost as the other one. So he technically will buy this one first. Then he'll purchase the stone second, and then he'll purchase the food third. Because they all cost one, and the values are first clay, then stone, then food. He'll go down a total of three favor points. So he's actually still ahead of me. <laughs> Wonderful. I do want to mention one point that I did not explain correctly. You know how I have a building on top of the building deck? You can purchase that. It's just you'll only get the value of favor over here on the right. You won't get any additional bonus from the board itself. And there you have it. That's the setup for Wisdom of Solomon in the solo mode. Hope you guys are excited to help me take on Jeroboam. Let's see if we can do it. I hope to see you all in the playthrough. I'll catch you at the next stop.